the Unimus and the Cedar Apple Rust. So the winged Unimus, you can see right here as you walk by, come check it out. You can see that the bark has these little papery wings that stick off of it. Um, it's also called the burning bush because in the fall the colors turn like bright red, so it looks like it's on fire. Um, this is another example of an exotic species that escaped. But yeah, so as you walk by you can kind of look at the, the branches and you can see the little wings on them. Um, and then if we walk just a little bit further down here, you can see a good example of the cedar apple rust. Okay, so cedar apple rust is caused by a fungus. Um, you can see the galls of it on the tree. You can see these little like woody things that hang down. This tree doesn't have the best examples, so I can show you more on the tree down there. Um, but you can see them, they're these little like wooden balls. If it gets enough rain and moisture, they'll actually open up and they'll be like bright orange, they look kind of like koosh balls. You guys know what koosh balls are? <laughs> I'm not that old, right? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm dating myself. Um, but they look kind of like koosh balls, they're like little orange spikes that kind of stick out. Um, let's see. Um, so this is a fungus that affects apple trees and cedars, which is why a lot of times when you have an apple orchard, the farmers will go down and cut down all the cedar trees in the area so it doesn't infect their crop. Okay, any questions about this? All right, let's keep going then. If you want to see the gall buttons, which you can see in front of you, we're not going to walk through it because that's where a lot of the ticks are. Um, but this is a good example of an ecotone. So an ecotone is a boundary between two different habitats. In this case, it's a boundary between the forest that you see on this side and the field that you see on this side. So something that's interesting about ecotones is that they have a lot more diversity than you'll find on either side individually. Um, this is because you have um, different amount, you have like increased resources at the edges and you have more structural complexity. So you have more diversity in between. Um, so the difference between the old field and the forest, um, the forest is a more mild climate in a way because it has all the trees so it's more protected from wind and it's more protected from sun. Okay. Um, this area is at a pretty early successional stage. It was just recently burned back in I believe February. They did a controlled burn so that it wouldn't get too bad. If you look at some of the trees, you'll notice that they have burn marks on them from a previous fire. Um, but this is a pretty early stage of succession. Everything's pretty low right now. Okay, do you guys have any questions about this station? Yeah, why is there high diversity of animal species in this area? Yeah, it's because it's an ecotone, right? It's the boundary between the two areas. So it has more structural complexity and you have more research resources along the edge. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so this is station seven. This is just talking a little bit about the forest. Um, so we have some species here that are typical of a more mature forest. We have the shagbark hickory, the ash, and the beech. There's also dogwood trees. Um, so the shagbark hickory is the one that you can see right there. It looks like it has like hairy pieces of bark that stick off. You guys all see it? Um, so the shagbark hickory is recognized by its shaggy bark, and it also provides a good sleeping habitat in the daytime for bats if there isn't a cave nearby. Interesting fact. Um, the beech trees are the ones that have the smooth bark. You can see that in the very back. It looks like it doesn't even have bark, but it does. It's just very smooth. Um, they re reproduce vegetatively, so often other trees around them you'll see will be a clone, right? So they're clonal. Um, and then dogwoods, let's see if I can find one. Okay, so as you pass by, you'll notice there's a tree back there that has an orange flag tied to it. Maybe you guys can see it from the, your angle back there. Um, but that's a dogwood tree. So they're smaller and they're usually found in the understory layer. Their bark looks like alligator skin. It's scaly. Um, and what's interesting about the dogwood is that they produce high quality fruits, right? As opposed to most of the plants we've seen which make low quality fruits. So the high quality fruits are really rich in carbohydrates so they're desirable. So often you'll see the birds going and they'll be testing the fruits. They'll be biting into them uh, to see if they're ripe yet. So a lot of times you'll see a bunch of little fruits at the bottom of the tree where the birds have been picking them off to see if they're ripe so that they can get them immediately. All right, and you'll also notice some holes in some of the trees nearby. Uh, so small holes might have been drilled by woodpeckers that were looking for bugs, and others might be caused by decomposition. Um, and the larger cavities, so once it gets bigger, they're often used as nesting areas for animals like birds, mice, and raccoons. Okay, do you guys have any questions? The holes are used by raccoons? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep. You guys are good?
All right, so this is station eight. This is Buell Brook. You can see it right in front of us right here. And we'll also be talking a little bit about spring ephemerals. Do so you guys know what the word ephemeral means? Short-lasting. Short-lasting, perfect, so like short-lived. So these are little flowers that bloom in the early springtime before the trees can get all their leaves so that they're not competing for sunlight. And um, so some examples of the spring ephemerals we have in this area are the spring beauties. So you can see those, you can see a whole bunch of them right over here. But they're all along the path. I'm sure you guys know this one. Little white flowers. Spring beauties. You also have your violets, these purple ones. You can see down here. Um, and then we also have trout lilies. Let's see if I can find a good one. Here's an okay looking one. Um, so you probably won't see the flower itself, but you can recognize it by their leaves that look all mottled. They look kind of like trout skin. There's also some behind you right there. See those leaves? Those are trout lilies. Um, so the flowers are actually orange lilies. You probably won't see them because they get eaten by deer. The deer like to eat them. Um, another species is the may apple, which you also probably won't see because the deer like to eat them. Um, but they're perennial spring ephemerals that invest most of their energy in growing below ground structures that survive the winter. Um, and they don't flower every year, right? So they kind of have two different stages. So the ones that flower have two leaves and the ones that don't flower have only one leaf. So the additional leaf helps give them more energy to flower. Okay. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the stream. So the stream right here is pretty shallow. You'll notice it's not terribly big. Um, so it's a pretty harsh environment because it's not buffered from temperature changes, storms, droughts, anything like that. Um, the nutrients that go into the stream come solely from runoff and from decaying leaves. Um, some of the animals that you can find here are snails, crayfish, and larvae of midges, caddisflies, damselflies, and stoneflies. None of which are actually flies, but that's okay. Um, and so this part of the book drains a mossy area of the old field that we looked at. Um, so the pH is actually 4.6. It's a pretty low pH. It's pretty acidic. Um, and then if you go across the river, all right. So if you look on this side, you can see the bank. Um, you can see that there's kind of different layers of soil. Um, so the different layers that we have, at the very top we have the litter layer. Underneath that is the pore soil. Um, then the fractured shale, and then beneath that is the shale bedrock, okay? And the underlying bedrock here is called Brunswick shale, like New Brunswick. It's a red sedimentary rock that was formed 180 million years ago during the Triassic period. Um, and the bedrock here is pretty superficial, and the soil is shallow and not very good for nutrients. Okay? You guys have any questions about Buell Brook? What are the animal species here? The animal species, we have snails, crayfish, and then larvae of midges, caddisflies, damselflies, and stoneflies. Can you name the layers again? Yeah, so on the top we have the litter layer, and then the poor soil, then the fractured shale, and then the shale bedrock. So how many layers is that in total? Four. That four. is four layers. Yep. Okay, you guys good? Four, four as in P O O R? Uh huh, four. Okay. Yep. Okay. Alright, let's keep going then.